Hello, this is Peter Swidler continuing with my video series on the Bishop C5 uh, uh, Spanish and we're finally uh, tackling the main problem black players face these days uh, in this line namely uh, Bishop C2 on move 13 in the main line. Uh, you should by now be uh, quite familiar with the position you see on the screen and in this position white plays Bishop C2. There is a great number of moves available to black in, in this position but we will be uh, playing e takes d4 although I I still want to list through uh, the options uh, just to give you an overview of how the the theory of the variation would developed uh, among things black can play here Alexander Morozovich on a number of occasions played h6 here without any practical success but still it's a move you could maybe consider although uh, I have to say that in a position where black is already uh, down a pawn and uh, play is very very concrete wasting a whole tempo on h6 seems a bit uh, bit risky let's put it like this queen d7 is an interesting option creating this strange idea of playing knight before uh, next move against uh, most of white's options it's uh, it's a move which can be played, I couldn't refuse it outright, but I don't think it equalizes completely, so I thought I will mention it for people who might want to try this, but um, I don't really think it's the best choice. Uh, it's, well, it, it was considered to be possible to equalize playing d5 here, but then people realized that after h3, uh, black can't really play bishop h5 anymore because the, the complications after e d5, queen d5 and d5 don't work out uh, for him at all and the position after bishop takes f3, queen takes f3, e d4, e d5, queen d5 uh, the queen swap, bishop b4, knight d7 and let's say bishop f4 this position uh, although once again uh, you might uh, hold it uh, eventually but you will most certainly not enjoy uh, attempting that, so uh, cannot really be recommended. Despite the fact that uh, in an endgame like that, you, you obviously will have drawing chances. Uh, a very very sharp line is bishop takes f3, uh, gf, queen takes e d4 is once again not very challenging, knight h5. And in this position, black's largest problem is the move f3, f4. Uh, this position uh, has been uh, heavily discussed both in Grandmaster play and in uh, correspondence and uh, other centaur-like games, so to speak. And uh, apparently in, in correspondence chess, uh, black uh, goes queen h4 here, as, as he does. Uh, in, uh, this has been played by strong Grandmasters as well, and uh, uh, sort of holds his own in, in very, very sharp positions arising after, let's say, takes, takes, d5, knight, e7, and queen f3. But uh, my, uh, well, admittedly not uh, extensive analysis failed to prove this position is completely equal once again. I will be including some guidelines on this, as usual, uh, in the notes, because uh, we, I had to make a lot of judgment calls on uh, which lines you should be aiming for, and uh, this one didn't make the cut. But it's uh, it leads to very, very interesting positions you might enjoy playing, but the... the once again, I'm just not entirely certain this equalizes. The main move in this position is ed4, and currently the largest problem facing black is a recapture with the knight, which will be the subject of the second video dealing with bishop c2. But uh, in the first video we will deal uh, with uh, c takes d4, which is uh, also a challenging move. Uh, currently black uh, doesn't really have any... Uh, particular problems in this position according to uh, to Grandmaster practice, but I want to, to show you a few places where you need to be very precise and in fact uh, there are some positions which are considered to be completely safe, but I'm not entirely sure they are, so I will be showing you those. It's possible to play rook e8 here, but I don't think uh, this move uh, is entirely satisfactory. There are some traps for white here as well, for instance uh, uh, even uh, the immediate reply to rook e8 needs to be precise. Some people have been playing rook a4 here, which I don't think is the best move in the position. I think you should play rook e1. But once again, uh, I couldn't convince myself this equalizes entirely. So uh, d5, which is by far the main line, is what I'm suggesting you play here. e5 is the, the, the obvious reply, knight e4. And in this position, uh, there is a large number of moves available to white, of course. 
but uh, most of them are not particularly uh, threatening and we'll go through them one by one until we arrive at the position which I think is currently slightly problematic for black although I think you should be able to to make a draw uh, h3 bishop h5 will most likely transpose to what we will be discussing later it's notable that taking on f3 and going knight g5 is not quite good because after f4 uh, taking on h3 and queen h4 after queen f3 the knight obviously gets lost and uh, if you play knight e6 instead after rook a4 queen h4 and f5 uh, the complications don't seem to work out uh, as well for black as you would have liked uh, so bishop h5 uh, in this position rook a4 will transpose to what i think is currently the main line other options are g4 bishop g6 uh, seems to be quite good for black because after knight c3 you can start immediate counterplay against the weakened white king side by playing f5 and uh, let's say if you play bishop b3 here uh, black even has a choice uh, you can play f6 which i think leads to uh, interesting and imbalanced positions after ef queen f6 for instance and i think you also can make an immediate draw by playing knight takes c5 this is also a, a standard uh, idea you will see in, uh, after the immediate bishop e3 without, without h3 as well. Uh, using all, all those pins, black wins material back, he takes on e3, and in this position I think it's more precise to start with bishop takes f3, rook has to take, queen, rook takes b5. Uh, the best move for white here is e6. And in this position, uh, you probably will hold after fe fe6 as well, but apparently uh, f7, f5 just equalizes on the spot. I had some time to check this, and it seems to me that uh, with precise play, black just uh, makes a reasonably comfortable draw here. So bishop e3 is not, uh, not very threatening. The main move after h3, bishop h5, is rook a4, and we will get back to that uh, in a moment. This is the main, the main line you need to be uh, somewhat worried about. Uh, instead of h3, let's go through the weaker moves. Of course, knight c3, knight takes d4 is uh, unattractive for white, as is uh, bishop b3, knight takes c5. We already mentioned this, uh, this particular tactical theme. Bishop a4 on move 16 uh, is uh, a play I'm, oh, sorry, it, it, this is a move we, you can try making with white, but after f6 uh, queen c2, knight b4, queen b3, the, the way to... White tries to justify uh, his uh, previous move by unpinning himself in this tactical fashion, but it doesn't quite work out because after fe5 uh, the complications seem to work out fine for black. Queen b4, uh, bishop f3 or rook f3 uh, seem very promising, and if knight e5, bishop e2, rook e1, uh, there's a forced line which works out fine. Rook f2 bishop b3, queen h4, queen takes b4, and here black has a very cute little tactic, he plays uh, bishop f3, forces white to take with a knight, and now takes on g2, uh, and uh, the game uh, will uh, end a perpetual in a perpetual after uh, king g2, queen g4. Uh, more serious attempt here is the move rook a3, which is something uh, uh, Sam Shanklin played in uh, 2015, so uh, some, att uh, some attention probably should be paid to that move because he, he won his game, uh, I believe, and uh, people will probably take note and think that this is uh, an interesting idea they can try. Uh, his game against uh, Savian in, in Vikings AB continued uh, f6, e takes f6, queen takes f6, and knight c3 and uh, these positions are not very pleasant for black because uh, for instance in the game black won the pawn back by taking on c3 taking on f3 but unfortunately uh, a position like this is not entirely equal because the bishop on b6 is very boxed in and uh, it's not that easy to solve that problem and to include it in, in play and, and white retains uh, considerable pressure so i think after f6 uh, e takes f6, uh, black might not have immediate equality. After rook takes f6, white plays knight c3 as well. And uh, the tactics after knight takes f2, rook takes f2, bishop, bishop takes d4, and now very precise move rook a4, don't seem to uh, favor black. Uh, this, I think, doesn't, doesn't quite equalize. 
But there is a very uh, nice idea which I think uh, disarms rook a3 quite sufficiently. You can play uh, bishop h5 here, sidestepping uh, all these tactics and uh, moving the bishop away from potential pin pins along the fourth. And uh, with white to move in this position, he uh, doesn't really have any uh, particularly good uh, ways to continue. If white goes bishop d3, then knight takes d4, takes, takes, bishop d4, d4, queen d4, ef, uh, should make a draw reasonably comfortably. And if white goes bishop f4, uh, now you can play f6. And after uh, e takes f6, rook takes f6, a queen c1, for instance, queen d7, black gets uh, fantastic compensation for the for, for the pawn. Uh, the second rook is coming to f8, bishop takes f3, and uh, knight takes d4 are potentially threatening. So uh, I think uh, rook a3, rook a3, uh, bishop h5 is a very, very decent uh, reply in this position, which should be sufficient for uh, for a good game for black. And with this we come uh, to uh, our main line. Uh, it doesn't really matter much what white starts with rook a3, rook a4, I'm sorry, or h3. It still leads to the same position. You have to play f6. And after h3, the bishop retre retreats to h5. And uh, th this is uh, uh, the position this is the position uh, that we uh, need to be concerned the most. Here, uh, white plays knight c3. And after knight takes c3, uh, other options are available to black. So let's, uh, let's actually pause here for a second and uh, uh, consider, consider the options, because this is... Uh, this is the position which uh, should be uh, talked about at, at somewhat greater length. Black has uh, at least three very, very different options here available to him, and uh, they lead to uh, drastically different positions. And uh, the one I would very much like to recommend on aesthetic grounds is the position after um, knight takes c3, b takes c3, f takes e5, g4, and in this position e5, e4. There, there has already been a high-level game played like this, knight g5, bishop g6. And here, uh, Volokitin uh, playing against uh, uh, Debushis in, in Dubai in uh, 2014. He went knight e6, queen h4, knight f8, rook f8. And here he even played bishop a3, which uh, is completely losing after rook f3. Uh, this position is uh, not lost for white by any means. He can play bishop b3, to which black has to reply knight e7, bishop a3, c6. And this is a very, very sharp uh, line, which I think works out fine for black. But there is a, a drawback to, to this whole idea, and the reason I'm not actually recommending that you do this is the fact that after bishop g6, white can play f4. And... Uh, the more I looked at this position, the less I, uh, the less I liked it for black. Uh, I will not go into too much detail because, once again, this is not what I'm recommending you do. So there's really no, not, not that much of a point to, uh, to, to, to spend uh, a lot of time on this position. But uh, I, I wanted to warn you that uh, going for this particular line with black is, is somewhat fraught with danger because this position, uh, as I mentioned, I think is is potentially very dangerous for black. Uh, and uh, if we uh, decide that this is uh, not entirely satisfactory, we have to start to, uh, looking at options after knight c3. And uh, other option here is to play bishop takes f3, which forces gf, take on c3, and take on e5. And uh, I also spent a number of uh, hours looking at this position and uh, trying to uh, figure out what's what. And my current conclusion is that black probably holds, but he will have to hold positions like this. For instance, f4. I don't even think this is the best move, but just to show you what black will be facing in a moment. e takes d4, I think, is the best move here, because uh, e4, uh, white will undermine this pawn with f3. Queen h5, h6, king h1, rook f6, rook g1. And uh, 
It seems that black survives this. It seems uh, there is enough uh, resources for black not to get mated, but it looks very scary. And even scarier, I think, is the idea to just take on e5, knight e5, and play f4 here. Black more or less has to play knight g6, and now uh, white has uh, two very dangerous moves. One is f5, to which the knight has to go to e7, bishop a3, rook f6, and once again, probably this is fine for black, but I don't think it's much fun. And also white can play queen h5, creating a threat of f5, f6, uh, hitting the pawn on h7. And uh, here, after queen d7, I was not able to find any, any victory for white uh, after some checking. But it looks like uh, black is putting a lot of his you know, eggs in, in one basket here. If something is found in this position, it probably will not be you know, a slightly better endgame for white. It, it might feature mate at some, at some stage in the game. And uh, this is rather a large risk to be taking if you have other options. So I continued looking, looking at other stuff. And uh, my proposed solution to this problem, although I'm not particularly excited about it, I have to say, but the, I think of the options available, this is maybe the, practically the, the, the best, is to still play knight c3, bc3, fe5, and after g4 to play queen f6. And this, as far as I could tell, almost by force, leads to the following position. Knight g5, bishop g6, d takes e5. If white starts with bishop takes g6, you can take on g6 with a pawn, d, bishop takes f2, king, king g2, queen takes, takes e5. And this uh, works out uh, fine for black. After rook f4, you cannot take twice because queen takes d5 is strong, but after bishop c5, uh, black uh, seems to survive this uh, without, uh, without uh, too much trouble. Although, of course, the position still remains very sharp. White goes rook e1, queen c3, queen d5, king h8. This is a very, very sharp line which needs to be uh, double-checked. But uh, the machine seems to suggest that this is uh, not that bad for black. Uh, I think uh, stronger is d takes e5, to which... Uh, you have to reply by knight takes e5, because queen takes e5, bishop takes g6, h takes g6, runs into a, a, a very, very strong move, which, it, which is very, very easy to miss, rook a2, overprotecting the pawn on f2, therefore uh, defending against all kinds of shenanigans with queen g3 check, and this position uh, is quite, quite dangerous for black. So you have to play knight takes e5, and here white takes on d5 with check, uh, bishop g6, knight g6, queen d5, king h8 is uh, uh, okay for black. Black gets a lot of counterplay for his one pawn. Queen d5, therefore, king h8, rook f4. And now a sequence of only moves for both, both sides. Rook fd8, everything else loses. Rook f6, rook d5. Rook e6 is the only reply white has. Bishop takes c2, rook takes e5. And now you have a choice. Uh, you can simply take on e5 here. Knight f7 check, king g8, uh, knight takes e5, and make some kind of a move, I don't know, rook e8, for instance, bishop f4. And uh, what we have on the board here is an endgame which uh, martial players among us would think that, I mean, this should be holdable. Uh, it's not ideal, of course, to go for an endgame of pawn down, but uh, generally speaking, with so few pawns left on the board and two bishops against bishop and knight, this uh, should, I think, be, uh, be possible to hold an endgame like this. But there is an even uh, sharper solution, uh, so to speak, in an endgame like, uh, you know, it's already an endgame, but still you can play for a more direct equality with rook d3. Hitting the pawn on c3, also hinting that the pawn on h3 might also hang in some lines. And after rook f e1, you have to play bishop a4, otherwise, of course, uh, rook e8 is a bit of a threat. But after bishop a4, white needs to switch to a more positional play. And the line might go something like bishop f4, h6, knight e4. Now you consolidate by playing king g8. And uh, it seems to me that it's very likely black will survive this, because uh, there are weaknesses he can play against. The bishop returns to c6. 
there's also uh, in many positions uh, an idea of playing rook e8 and starting trading, uh, starting the rook trade. And uh, I think objectively the, the likeliest result from this position is a draw. Once again, I realize that uh, I am steering you towards an endgame uh, which you will have to hold with precise play, but uh, in my opinion, uh, the alternatives are, are somewhat less appealing uh, than this, and uh, this is what you should be aiming for if white actually uh, goes for this line. This is not the, the, the most fashionable line, and uh, as I said, uh, the, the game Valakit and Debashis might uh, give the impression that Black is doing excellently well, but uh, as a matter of fact, uh, there are uh, problems for Black here if White knows what he's doing, and uh, sort of at the time of the recording of this video, this is, uh, I think, practically uh, the best solution, the best solution available to Black. Uh, this, I think, concludes the video on uh, 14 c takes d4, and in the final video of the series we will be dealing with uh, knight takes d4, where the uh, situation for black is uh, perhaps even slightly less rosy than here, but still there are some ideas there I want to show you uh, and uh, give you an overview of your options. Uh, please stay tuned to watch that as well. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, this has been Peter Svidler for Just24. Hi, this is Grandmaster Damien Lemos. First of all, I hope you enjoyed um, this video. If you would like to receive more free chess videos from us, you can just click the subscribe button below. I would also highly recommend signing up for my free mail course, The 10 Grandmaster Secrets to Dominate Chess. During this exclusive course from OnlineChessLessons.net, I'll share with you my own Grandmaster shortcuts to effective attacking, defending and growth hacks to improving your chess without um, complicated books or memorization. So sign up by clicking the sidebar on the right and I know you won't be disappointed. Once more, this is Damien uh, for OnlineChessLessons.net and I'll see you um, in my videos. Thank you.